Enteral feeding is inherently dangerous. Our latest regimen monitors, protects, and safely exploits GI function without wasting digestive juices. It automatically prevents overfeeding, a major postoperative goal. This approach most effectively enhances the dual channel tubes currently placed by surgeons. The suction channel is aspirated into a chamber. All air bubbles are vented efficiently. The degassed aspirate is returned via the feeding channel. The patient's tolerance of his enteral feeding is monitored every 30 seconds. Feeding is titrated to match outflow from the feeding site. Two plastic chambers are connected via one-way valves to the aspiration channel. The no-fly zone is the segment of proximal small bowel that contains the aspiration orifices, which continuously and efficiently empty that segment of air and gas. These flow alternately into one or the other chamber every 30 seconds. The two chambers alternate every 30 seconds as to which is on suction while the other is off. The aspiration channel is continuously emptying the no-fly zone into one or the other chamber. All air bubbles are vented efficiently. When a chamber is off suction, its degas fluid flows by gravity back to the feeding site. In our published experience, aspiration of swallowed air from naturally constricted sites, the esophagus or intestine, is many fold times more efficient decompression than gastric aspiration. This air removal alone improves immediately postoperative GI function to the point that large volumes of elemental diet are fully and safely absorbed. In our experience, the digestive juices plus immediate feedings that arrive at the enteral feeding site are completely moved downstream by normal peristalsis processed and absorbed. When feedings superimposed on the inflow of digestive juices temporarily exceed the gut's ability to handle that load, the excess fluid would tend to accumulate at the feeding site. Instead, this excess will rise in the chamber to reach the overflow tube. Only this excess, during its 30-second cycle, will be removed permanently. This seldom exceeds a total of 100 to 200 milliliters a day. Elemental diet is fed continuously. Swallowed air, saliva, gastric juice, bile, and succus enter the proximal end of the no-fly zone to be aspirated efficiently into the chamber that's on suction. Simultaneously, the chamber off suction returns its degassed liquid back with the feedings. Most of the delivered liquid progresses forward by peristalsis to be processed and absorbed. Any liquid that flows retrograde also enters the no-fly zone from which it is aspirated. As long as outflow from the feeding site can accommodate the total inflow of feedings plus secretions, there is no overflow and wastage. Any excess fluid and only excess fluid is removed. Additional nursing attention was limited to brief glances at the fluctuating liquid columns. In our experience, patients tolerated enteral feedings immediately following resective surgery.